Okay, let's bring it all together. We start off this unit, lesson two, uh, with the multiplication principle. How do you always complete one task, second task, third task, multiply all the ways together? So that actually comes into play in more complex problems. So there is the multi-stage labeling issue I need to deal with. For problems like the following, the company has 10 expert plumbers and eight trainee plumbers. It wants to send two experts and three trainees to a job. How many ways can this be done? So I can read this problem and see there's actually sort of two, two issues going on. Dealing with the expert plumbers, I need there's 10 experts, I need to send two of them. And there are, deal with the trainee pro, trainees, there are eight trainees, and I need to send three of them. So it's really two tasks at, here, at hand here. Task one, deal with the experts. Task two, deal with the trainees. So let's do that. So there's a, there's a multi-stage thinking going on here. So task one is deal with the experts. And what's the issue for the experts? Well, there are 10 experts, I want to send two of them. How many ways can I do that? Well, 10 experts, two will be labeled sent, eight will be labeled left behind. All right, task two is deal with the trainees. What's the task there? Well, the task is there are eight trainees of which I want to send three. So how many ways can I deal with task two? Well, there are eight trainees, three will be labeled sent, uh, five will be labeled stay back, Bingo, that's the ways to complete task two. There's no interactions going on between these two tasks. How I choose trainees doesn't affect how I choose experts and vice versa. So by the multiplication principle, how many ways can I complete both tasks together? together that is select experts and trainees to be sent on this job? The answer is multiply those two answers together. Beautiful. That's what I mean by multi-stage labeling. Look at the problem, look at its context. Does it break down to separate tasks? Okay, yes, then do the separate task individually. And by the multiplication principle, the final answer is the product of the counts for those tasks. That's it. All right, it always looks easy, but um, the, you know, trickiness can abound in these problems, don't get me wrong. I've just made the mathematics very clear. Now there's still some clever thinking is often needed. But let me do a complicated example to explain how some trickiness can indeed occur. Clean my board. Okay, here's a very long, messily written problem. It goes as follows. There are seven men and eight women in an office, and five are needed for a committee. My question is, how many ways can I make this committee? But I've made it a six-part question. There's going to be various conditions I need to consider in each stage. So how many ways can I make a committee of five from seven men and eight women in an office? And part A says, how many ways can I do that if gender is irrelevant? Okay, so in which case, I don't care about men and women, there's just 15 people in an office, I need to make a committee of five. So to answer part A, of 15 people, uh, 
five will be labeled on the committee and 10 will be labeled lucky. That's it. 15 factorial over five factorial, 10 factorial. So gender doesn't matter, bingo, I'm done. Part B, how many ways can I make the committee of five if it must be all male for some biased reason? All right, well, in which case, just think of the context of the problem. There are seven men and eight women in the office. It has to be all male, so I've got seven men to deal with. Make choose five of those for committee. All right, in which case, for part B, of the seven men, five will be labeled on the committee and two will be labeled lucky. And the eight women aren't even in the consideration here, so there's no eights involved. That's it. The problem just reduces to those seven men. Common sense is what I'm trying to use here. Part C, suppose the committee must consist of three women and two men. So now it's kind of split into like this sort of multi-stage thing. There's women and men. So it's actually a two-task problem. So for part C, I've got to first of all deal with the women. How many ways can I have three women be on this committee? And part two is deal with the men. All right. Each of those is its own little counting problem. There are eight women in total. Three need to be on the committee. So amongst the women, there are eight factorial. Three will be labeled on. Five will be labeled lucky. So there's the task for the women. Task for the men, I need two men to be on. There are seven men in total, two will be labeled on, five will be labeled lucky. And by the multiplication principles, how many ways can I deal with both those tasks together as a whole? I multiply those two particular answers. Grand. I could actually work out the numbers. Obviously, uh, I don't feel like doing that actual arithmetic, though I suppose one should at some point. All right, part D. Seven men, eight men in an office. Suppose I must be on this committee of five. Let's assume I'm one of the men on this office. Okay, now, now I have to think my way through here. It's just a little nut way, your way through stuff. So I'm one of these seven men and I must be on the committee, which means I still need four more people to be on that committee. I'm one of the people of the 15, so there's actually 14 people left in the office and four of them still need to be on the committee. In which case the answer to the D is there are 14 people, four of them are to be labeled on with James and 10 will be labeled lucky. All right. Part E, suppose I can't be on the committee. Now, just, just sit back and think your way through this. Okay, I'm one of these men. I'm not allowed to be on the committee. So actually, there's only six men in consideration and eight women in consideration. There's 14 people in consideration and five of them are needed for the committee. So the answer to part E then is uh, 14 people under consideration, five will be on and, um, I can't do mathematics, I can't do the arithmetic, nine will be off. Bingo. I'm just out the room. In fact, I'm just totally irrelevant. I could be out, outside, often, I don't know, Barbados or something, doing those considerations. And now comes the juicy one, F. Seven men and eight women are in an office, five need for committee. How many ways can be done if one particular man and one particular woman can't be on together? So maybe uh, Joseph, is all, uh, Joseph and uh, Mary, they can't be on at the same time. Uh, maybe Joseph by himself could be on, or Mary by herself could be on, but I counted them on together. Now, the fact that I just sort of labeled three possibilities, Joseph on by himself, Mary on by herself, uh, neither of them on together, I guess, or both, ugh, it feels complicated. So here's a, a nice little technique in mathematics. If one approach feels complicated to think your way through, count the opposite. Count all the situations that are counter to what you want, and then subtract them from everything. For example, what would be bad in part F if Joseph and Mary were actually on the committee together? So how many bad committees are there? So Joseph is on, Mary is on, so they might as well just leave the room. In my considerations right now, how many committees with Joseph and Mary both on? They could be out the window, they're on. That leaves 13 people in the office and I need three more people to be labeled what I want. So here are, there are going to be 13 people, Joseph and Mary out, out in Barbados or wherever they are, um, three will be on the committee with them and 10 will be labeled uh, not lucky. So here's the count of all the bad committees. All right, and what's that done for me? Well, part A was the total of all the possible committees. Ah, all, here's all the committees, here's all the bad committees. So the number of good committees I want for part F must be the answer of all committees, 15 factorial, five factorial, 10 factorial, take away the count of bad committees, 13 factorial, three factorial, 10 factorial. Bingo. So there's the answer to part F. All right, again, like I said, you might have to put your feet up on the table sometimes and think, okay, what am I actually doing in each of these problems? If I'm on the committee, then I'm out of consideration. That leaves me 14 other people to consider. Or if I'm doing some strange thing about combinations of people that can't be together, you might want to think the opposite and count the opposite instead first. Okay, there can be trickiness in these problems, but the actual mathematics in terms of the actual getting the 
counts to the tasks is this labeling principle. So work through the text under this video, lots and lots of practice there, all the solutions are in the companion guide to this course, and you'll be an expert by the end of it. It's just grand, grand stuff.